my first guest tonight. My first guest tonight is an accomplished musician, artist and poet, but many of you will also know him because of his high-profile relationship with the supermodel Kate Moss and his public struggle with drugs. Now, he's a good, solid Irish name, so there must be Irish in there somewhere. Will you welcome, please, the lead singer of Baby Shambles, the seemingly irrepressible Mr. Pete Doherty. <laughs> Pete, you're very welcome to the show. Please make yourself at home. Okay, Pete, it's the first time for me to meet you. I love you, Pete! <laughs> I love you too, darling. Uh, first time to meet you. Hi, Mum. <laughs> first time to meet you. So all I know really about you is what I've read about you. So I mm. want to know how you're doing at the moment. I'm doing all right, yeah, no thanks to BMI Airlines. Like, six hours in Heathrow. <sighs> uh, we don't hear about that, do you? Did you hear that, folks, uh, at home? She was waiting for Pete for six hours outside Trinity College today. Yeah. You are his number one fan. Number one. Number one fan, all right. Um, you know, when it, when it comes to the stuff that's written about you, we all read about the drugs, drugs, drugs. What sort of a place are you in right now? Are you, are you clean? Are you coping? Um, yeah, I'm coping mostly, and I'm mostly clean. I, w I won't lie to you, it's like, yeah. It is, it is a struggle, but uh, I don't know what to say. We could be here for hours, so I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I was just wondering, because you're a, a guy with a, a, you know, a, a, a brain, you got good results in your exams, you were heading, I don't know, for, for what sort of a place, and then somewhere along the way, music came into your life, but a lot of other stuff came into your life too. Do you have any regrets about any of the stuff that, that happened to you? I think... Um, for a long, long time, uh, it was just music. I never really like tampered with the dark side, if you like, yeah. um, as people see it, until like, long after I kind of started making a bit of money and doing well with the music. You know, my brain was fully formed, and I was kind of in my, my mid twenties before I, you know, started dabbling. Um, in fact, I was quite, quite an innocent soul, really. You know, I mean, I didn't even know what drugs were. Until I was 23. Yeah. Yeah. At school, um, I've heard it said that you're kind of a, a, a studious fellow, an academic fellow, um, and that, you know, you wouldn't have been the most popular guy in the class. You wouldn't have been... Thanks, yeah. yeah. Is that, was that so? Were you... um, well, it wasn't a boffin, but I think it came, just came quite naturally to me. I just enjoyed reading, and that wasn't, wasn't really the norm. The type of school I went to, it wasn't, you know, no one expected to do well in their exams, and... You know, hardly anyone went on to do A levels, so it was a bit. Yeah, it was quite. And you did brilliantly at both the GS GCSEs I, I, and the A levels. I did all right. Yeah, yeah. I did all right. And then came music, and you, you have had phenomenal success. You have your masses of fans with both the Libertines and Baby Shambles, um, and then you kind of went off track in terms of drugs. Now. To, to the point that uh, you're, you, know, you, you and your dad were estranged for a while because of, I suppose, the, the trouble you got yourself into. Yeah, no, well, we, we still are. I mean... Do you not talk to him? Well, in his mind, um, if I'm still using in any way, then basically I'm not, yeah, I'm not his son, so... Um, but my mum speaks to me secretly, like, you know... Not anymore, it's kind of secret. <laughs> Uh, yeah. But, but th does that hurt you a lot, that you can't have the normal kind of communication, or are you so wrapped up in your own, your own world and your own addictions that uh, they take precedence over family I, time? I try, I try and, and uh, wrap myself up enough so that it doesn't get to me and I don't feel anything, but really, yeah, of course it gets to me, because I, you know, I love the man and you know, I, I grew up kind of idolising him and... Yeah, it just breaks my heart that, for him, that's the be-all and end-all of our relationship, whether or not, you know, there's, there's something, like, to his mind, despicable in my bloodstream, mm. determines whether or not he talks to me. And I'd love to just, you know, like, go to football with him like I used to, or go for, go for a drink and just, yeah, be a son and have a, have a father, cos... You know, when you get to a certain point, you're responsible for your own life. You know, mm. up to a point, your parents have to take the rap for the way you turn out. But after a while, it's you. And 
you know, what you do to your own body is in a sense your own business. But when you do it publicly, often you not only hurt yourself, but you hurt your family who, you know, can't, they, they, they may kind of appear to disown you, but they don't disown you really. I mean, they are behind it all the people who love you most. That was, that was a problem, I think, for him. He couldn't understand why it was thrown in his face, if you like, in, in, the, in the papers. And he saw it as a complete betrayal and, you know, upsetting my mum and my nan and my sisters and just sort of, yeah, selfish. Um, but in actual fact, a lot of the stuff that was written, it's all, it's all distorted and exaggerated. You know, I'm not making excuses, but I think a lot of the time he... Yeah, you know, I mean, I don't remember him growing up. I don't remember him reading the Daily Star or the Sun. So all of a sudden, you know, they've become gospel. Like, you know? yeah. It's hard to ignore those. If you go into your local newspaper shop to buy the paper, you, you might buy the Guardian or the Telegraph, but right up there in your face, maybe it's a picture of Pete and... Not and looking his best, no. Not looking his best. And, you know, maybe he feels a terrible shame. Gorgeous. Well, this is a nice, cheery conversation, isn't it? So, uh, and your dad, the Doherty part, of course, comes from your dad. So what's the Irish connection? Um, Ted Doherty. He came to Paddington, uh, I think it's from Wexford, no, Waterford. Uh -huh. uh, just after the war, I think. Um, met a nice English girl called Dolly, Iron Man. Uh, still with us. I, I never met Ted. He died like, long before I was born, but... Uh -huh. uh, yeah, there's a few. I remember when we played Derry with Baby Shambles. I had about 4,000 cousins in the audience. It was ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. um, the, the talent that you have, I mean, it, it runs to being artistic, to being poetic, being a, a great songwriter and a musician. And you are admired as, certainly by one person in our audience, but by many, many more around the place. Do you, feel, do you feel any responsibility at all as a role model, for example? You know, that people look at you and they think it's cool to be like Pete? Uh, I don't well, she says it is. She says no, it is. she doesn't. She doesn't mean that. It's, I think one thing that's, that's been apparent, like, um, that's been a result of my drug use, has been like the loss of important relationships, you know, like with my family or, or whoever. Um, you know, the loss of great opportunities with bands um, and missed tours and loads of embarrassing situations. I don't see how anyone could, like, could see how, you know, could glorify that or say that there's anything cool about, you know, what fucking, your, fucking you? your life up through drugs, yeah. you know? And you, you try time and time again to, to, to get rid of Do you see it as, a, as a, a blight on your life, as a curse on your life? No, I don't think about it and try not to talk about it. It's, like, it's quite unusual for me to have this conversation. Cause I no, it's just that you I, mentioned there that all the things that, that you, you missed, all the, the loves lost, uh, the, the family severed, all because of this. You know? <laughs> and you know what, uh, Pete, when I'm talking to you, it reminds me a little bit of talking with Shane. Shane McGowan, who's also a great poet, a great songwriter, a great talent. Um, and, you know, he has a, a fondness, to put it <laughs> politely, for alcohol, absolute. It sits lightly with him, though. I mean, you know, he is happy that that's the way he lives. I, don't, I don't understand why this, has, this is the be all and end all of, you know, how, how you look at someone and, and how you judge someone. I don't. Yeah, but that's what it's happens. Like Twelve questions you've asked, and then we'll be about drugs and, and alcohol. And, uh, I could ask you about love, because the most prominent thing that uh, hit the tabloids was your relationship with Kate. No, that's, that's like talking about drugs, though, isn't it? It's well, not really, no. <laughs> I mean, OK, she might be, she might be your drug. <laughs> um, but, I mean, in a sense... Hasn't the weather been bad recently? <laughs> it has. I believe I've, been, I've been snowed in out in the country in yeah. murder. <laughs> All right. Um, your ambitions for yourself, for the future, what would you like for yourself? Honestly, yeah. um, I really don't know. I, I've got... I've got a deep-rooted determination to, to write great songs and I still feel that I'm yet to... 
like, you know, the, like the way you've been talking to me about drugs and and Kate or whatever, it's that that's the first thing in your mind when you think of me. I'd rather like, I mean, I don't, I don't know if you could even name the song that I've written. Yeah. Possibly not. Possibly not, no. Well, I'd like to change that for a start, you know, I'd like you to, you know, I'd like to imprint a melody in your heart and in your head and and, and have that as the way you, you think of me. You're going to sing a song, I hope. I'll give it a go. Okay. Um, tell me about the, the, the provenance of this song. Is it new? Is it something you've... The title's quite old. It's stolen from a Smiths bootleg called The Last of the English Roses. Uh, yeah, it's all about, about school, schoolboy romance and... Um, we're actually all right. Yeah, there's a girl called Ashling Hedgecock, who I quite fancy many moons ago. Um, uh, do you want to play it? Yeah, please. All right. Well, I'm going to you do look dapper in your mother's old green scarf with your famous auntie Arthur's trousers on you were slapped by that slapper and we all laughed she laughed the loudest oh in 93 could charm the bees knees off the bees and cheeky you'd say and we all fell around rolling around the playground and saucy you'd say we all fell around rolling around the playground and in 94 we all sang skipping and dancing hand in hand with all the boys together and all the girls together She's the last of the English roses. She's the last of, last of the English roses. Shows the Rodneys from the Stanley. And the cappers from the river And a tip from a tat And a Winston's from a Eno And round the snooker table She danced the fruity tutti She almost spilt a lager Toasting girls of great beauty In 2009 That's how I came alive It was all the boys together And all the girls together She's the last of of the English roses She's the last of last of the English roses Shine this piece of wood in the language Performing with Baby Shambles again in Ireland. In Ireland? Um, Anytime soon? Yeah, I should imagine so. We'll do something like. Um, where do I get cut the money from? It's a joke. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on, just, I'll let me write you a check. All right. All right. Pete Tarty, thank you very yeah? much. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Pleasure.
Thank you. Right, thank you. Thank you. Pete uh, Darty there.